Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at collisions with rotation. And we've already seen problems involving collisions where we just had linear motion, and we know that momentum is conserved in those problems. Linear momentum. Now we're going to look at collisions, and in these problems, linear momentum is still conserved, but angular momentum is also conserved. So that's going to be our starting point. Angular momentum is conserved, and linear momentum is conserved. We're going to work with those two sets of equations to get our answer. So here's our example problem. We've got a thin rod of mass 2m, and it's got a length of l, and we've got a little ball of clay of mass m moving with some initial velocity. And let's say that this whole thing is happening on our lovely frictionless surface, so we don't have to account for friction here. So the ball of clay is going to stick to our thin rod, and afterwards, the whole shooting match is going to be rotating with some omega final, and the center of mass of the system is going to be moving at some final linear velocity. So we're going to need to find out what that center of mass is because that's what we're going to find our angular momentum with reference to. That's going to be our axis of rotation. All right, so our starting point here is L naught is equal to L final, and P naught is equal to P final. So initially, let's see, the angular momentum of a point particle we can calculate with R cross P, and that's going to equal the final I for the system times the omega final. And what we're going to see here is this calculating the I for the system, that's the hard part because it's not just a nice little 1 12th ml squared or 1 3rd ml squared. It's rotating around the center of mass, so we're going to have to find out what that is. So we need to go ahead and do that first. So if this is the center of mass of the rod, and then, whoa, let's undo that. Don't know what happened there. And we're going to find this distance right here from the center of mass down to of the rod to the new center of mass of the system. We'll call that YCM. So let's take that L over 2 point, this point right here, as Y equals 0 to find that YCM. So our equation for YCM is YCM is going to equal the mass of the rod, which is 2M, times its Y position, which is 0, plus the mass of the ball of putty times its Y, its y position, which is L over 2. And we're going to divide that by the total mass of the system, which is 3m. So we're looking at masses cancel, and we have YCM is equal to L over 6. So we're 1 sixth of L. So let's go ahead and put that in. And that's what we're going to use for our R down here. So the ball of putty is going to be half of L minus one-sixth of L away from the axis of rotation. So we've got L over 2 minus L over 6 for R. And the momentum is going to be M times V naught. And that's going to equal I for the system times omega final. Over here in the linear momentum side, things are actually much easier. Because initially, we just have the ball of putty with momentum. And finally, we have the ball of putty and the rod times v final. So it's just mv naught divided by 3m is equal to v final. So we right now have found the final linear velocity. It's a third of the initial. Uh, that would be a 3. v naught over 3 is equal to v final. So great. That's a nice result. Now we need to find omega final with this. So let's rewrite this on the next page. OK, so here's where we're at. Um, we have L over 2 minus L over 6. So we're looking at, uh, what is that? It would be 3 sixths minus 1 sixth. We're going to get 2 sixths, which is 1 third. So we have L over 3 here, mv naught is equal to i for the system times omega final. So that's great. This distance right here is just L over 3. Lovely. OK, so now we're going to find the hard part, the rotational inertia of the system. So here, I for the system is going to equal I for the ball of clay plus I for the rod. 
and these are both rotating around the center of mass. So I for the ball of clay is just going to be m times his distance from the center of mass squared. So L over 3 squared, because that's I for a point particle, remember, mr squared. Plus, now I for the rod, I'm going to use the parallel axis theorem. And we remember that the parallel axis theorem says that I for any system rotating around an axis parallel to its ax center of mass axis is going to be the I for the center of mass, which for a rod rotating around its center is 1 12th ml squared plus the mass of the rod times the distance that the new center of mass is from the old center of mass. So that's going to be m times this distance here. Remember, it was l over 6. So we're going to have m times l over 6 quantity squared. OK, so doing some math here, we have 1 ninth ml squared for the ball of clay. And inside here, we have 1 12th ml squared plus 1 36th ml squared. And believe it or not, the math actually works out pretty nicely here because 1 12th is 3 36 plus 1 36 gives us 4 36, which equals 1 9th. So that's a nice result. We have then 1 9th ml squared plus 1 9th ml squared. Sweet, 2 ninths ml squared is I for the system. So going back, and we're going to plug that in now, all the way back up here. So that means we're going to get L over 3 mv naught is equal to 2 ninths ml squared times omega final. So we divide both sides by 2 ninths ml squared. And that's going to give us omega final. And we can simplify this a little bit. We've got one of the L's cancels. The M cancels completely. So we have 9 halves times 1 third V naught over L. Those go away. And we get 3 halves V naught L. So 3 V naught over L is equal to omega final. It's kind of a weird looking little equals uh, equation right there, but if we think the units for V naught are meters per second, the units for L are in meters, so we end up with a unit of 1 over seconds, which is the unit for omega. All right, now this is one of the more difficult problems that you're going to uh, encounter when you're dealing with collisions with rotation. Uh, easier problem actually would be, let's say that we've got a new style of ballistic pendulum, which is a rod that's fixed to rotate about an axis here. And we fire a bullet or a ball of clay at this guy. Same kind of deal. We've got V naught, we've got M. But now, since the axis here is fixed, we actually don't need to worry about the new center of mass of the system because V, or sorry, I for the rod is just going to be one third ml squared, and I for the ball of putty is just going to be ml squared. So that's actually an easier type of problem because the axis is fixed. Also, uh, another problem that you could see would be like a, a uh, elastic collision here. Let's say that the ball comes in, and this is a rubber ball this time, and it's got V naught, and it hits the rod and then bounces backward. And again, the rod is fixed at an axis here. So because the two don't stick together, even if it wasn't fixed at an axis here, because the two don't stick together, then we don't have to again consider that pain in the butt center of mass, the new center of mass issue. Um, because the rod afterward is, is just going to be rotating with some omega final around its center of mass. It's going to be moving off at some v final. And the ball is going to be moving off in its own v final back the other way, completely linearly. And in this problem, if it is an elastic collision, we have the additional tool of saying that kinetic energy is conserved of the whole system. Just be careful because afterwards, you're going to have to account for the linear kinetic energy of the ball, the linear kinetic energy of the rod, and the rotational kinetic energy of the rod. 
but because we don't have to deal with a new center of mass, the I calculations aren't as difficult. All right, so momentum is conserved both linearly and angularly. Start there, work down through the problem, solve what for what you're trying to find. See you next time.